Hey everyone, today we're running benchmarking tests for the DevCash blockchain. So this is Nick Williams. Hey everybody. He's Devio's Director of Blockchain Development. Mm -hmm. And I'm Tom Anderson, Devio's CEO. So before we get started on the blockchain um, benchmarking, we're going to uh, start recording the screen and then we're gonna have a look at uh, Devio's source code. So right here you can see the latest commit for the branch we're gonna be running the benchmarking scenario with today. Um, the hash is up here in the URL. You can see it matches the commit and uh, this will be made available for everyone to uh, peruse or play with. Okay, so our test net is going to go live shortly and everybody's going to be able to have a look at the source code themselves and, and play with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, why don't you go ahead and get the benchmarking test started. Okay, so I'll start running all these various terminals. So what are you doing and on these uh, these screens? So I'm starting processes for each uh, node. There's three live shards, uh, one T1 shard and two T2 shards. So we have uh, tier two shards that handle the scaling for Devio's blockchain. And then they all coordinate their blocks down to a single tier one shard. Correct. So each T2 shard is bound to a specific subset of the wallets, and those are the only ways that uh, the system receives payments from wallets. Uh, then they aggregate them for the T1 shard, which arranges all the payments globally. Okay. So you just started the benchmarking running, so maybe you could describe what's going on. So right now in this scenario, um, we're doing a couple things. These two, these processes at the bottom are generating a few hundred thousand transactions live, and this top process is uh, parsing a bunch of pre-computed blockchains uh, for 98 more T2 shards. So how many transactions are we processing overall? Over 20 million. Okay, and how long did it take to pre-compute those transactions? To pre-compute the T2 chains took over 80 hours of compute on three machines. Okay, and then we're going to be running a simulation or, or a process of uh, uh, how many T2s that are live and how many T2s are simulated. So in this scenario, there's two live T2s and 98 simulated T2s. Okay, and, and we're, oh, go ahead. What we're really trying to show with this scenario is that the T1 can handle that huge amount of input from all those T2s. Okay, and the it's valid to run benchmarking with a number of the T2 uh, blockchains being pre-computed? Mm -hmm. The pre-computed blockchains work basically just like the live ones. The only difference is that they're not receiving settlements. So the T1 is still accepting their payments and processing those globally, but only the live T2s are actually receiving the settlements. Okay, and because they're independent blockchains, it's valid to pre-compute them and then you know simulate the way they would be coming through if they were as if they were running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're showing the uh, part of the process where they put the load on T1. You know, receiving the settlements, they can do more at their leisure. This is the bottleneck of the overall system right here. What what is? The T one's processing all those transactions. Okay. So, so by making sure the T one can process everything, we're showing a valid benchmarking. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah the T two is receiving the settlements. Doesn't add anything to the overall system. Really. Okay. And then the T twos, the tier two networks, what what they're processing, um, we've we've shown that they can process that number of transactions per second as well. Right. Yeah. The T ones took all those hours to run just because we were running them, or the T twos, sorry took all those hours to run because we were running them serially, um, but they take the same amount of time as these live T2s. So if we had 98 more machines, um, we could run them live as well. Okay, great. And, and maybe you could tell me a little bit about the, the networking uh, the, that we're mm -hmm. doing. So every all the transactions received by the T1 are coming over the network using ZMQ. Okay. Uh, so we could take the same code and use it in a production scenario as is. All right. And maybe you could tell me a little bit about the overall philosophy of the uh, DevCache multi-tier algorithm. Yeah, absolutely. So having these mini tier two shards helps it scale. Each of those tier twos has a specific subset of wallets. So if a wallet is going to give a payment to another wallet, it has to submit that payment to its T2 shard, which has a specific blockchain, independent of all the other blockchains associated with it. So there's no way to double spend from that wallet because you have to go through that specific shard. 
So the, the scaling we're doing comes from the tier two networks parallel processing the transactions. Correct. And then we're able to break out the shards because we separate you know, through a wallet designation which wallets are associated with which D2. And then we separate the payments and the settlements between the T2s. Correct. So after the, the shards initially verify those outgoing payments, they get aggregated globally in the T1 chain. And then all of the T2 shards see the blocks output by T1 and can settle the payments coming into those wallets. In some cases, it may be the same shard that the payment came out of, but in most cases, it will be a different shard. Okay, and then what's what's being processed right now in this first few minutes while we're running the benchmarking? Uh, two main things are happening. The T2s are generating transactions. Each of them is, are generating over 100,000 more transactions. So we're running two live T2s. The two live T2s, correct. Right. And the process associated with the T1 is parsing those 98 other T2 chains so it can announce those transactions over the network to the T1. Okay, so we're taking all of the pre-computed transactions and then we're uh, taking them from a file mm -hmm. and then preparing them to start coming in as if they would, would realistically be you know, being piped in from 98 T2s. Correct. Okay, good. All right, and then uh, as we um, you know, start showing the, the benchmarking results, um, what, what t take me through what's go going to happen after the initial processing. So momentarily, um, it's going to get into the consensus process, which is much faster than the transaction generation. Um, this top row, you see the tier one shard, then tier two A and tier two B. Um, and then over on the right, there's a bunch of Grafana graphs showing the processing. And actually, if you want to zoom in on this, you can see pretty clearly right here, um, this plateau here is the transaction generation, and then it dropped off because those are waiting to sync for timing purposes with the T1. And the algorithm itself is completely asynchronous, but just to get accurate timing across all the shards, we do this sync step before consensus begins. Okay, so we're getting to a point where we're... And there it goes, consensus just began. Okay. Um, so now we're taking all of the different, you know, T2 shards and we're actually piping through, you know, their blocks into T1. Correct. And, and we're at a steady state right now, right? Yeah, yeah. So the first block is often um, slightly fast because of the low latency. But once the live transactions start coming in from the other T2s, you get a steady state rate for the next few blocks. And that's really what we care about. After that, the T1 starts getting starved of transactions, and then the throughput gets artificially low. Okay, yeah, because we, we don't have more than 20 million transactions mm -hmm. to process. Yeah, and it's it's already finished, actually. T1 ran out of transactions to process and stopped. Um, that's a decision we made for benchmarking, just for ease of use. In a live network, obviously, it'll stay up waiting for more transactions. Okay, so it took us 80 hours to create all the transactions and then it actually just cranks through them and processes them in just a few seconds. Correct. So now I'm going to grab the logs so we can see the transactions per second. And right there. So we can see this, each of these stats is the, the rate at the point of that blocks creation. Okay. Um, so this is actually a very good run. We're seeing, you know, 9 million, 9 million, 9 million, 8 million, 7 million, 7 million, 8 million. So the, the numbers you're describing, 9 million, 8 million, 7 million, those are the number of um, transactions per second per block on the T1. Is that right? It's um, more or less, it's the number of transactions per second total at the time that that block was finalized. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so we did our final calculation, and what's the verdict? So the overall transactions per second in this run was 8.1 million at the steady state. We actually took off the very first block um, because it was artificially fast. It, it was generated within 39 milliseconds, which we attribute somewhat to low latency. We also took off the last few blocks, which were artificially low because of transaction starvation. And uh, what we got overall for the blocks that had low variance in the middle, so the steady state, the steady state exactly, yeah. was eight point one million transactions per second. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Nick. Thanks for taking us through the benchmarking. Mm -hmm.